In a recent study in the book of Daniel, we came across that term plucked up by the roots. Now that's, a, that's a term that ought to get our attention for sure. I know that when I pull up weeds, I don't just go out and cut them off, but I try to pluck them up by the roots. It means totally dis- destroy, to uh, eradicate, get rid of them. And uh, I don't know if you remember what that term was used about, but um, remember that in, uh, in the seventh chapter of the book of Daniel, Daniel had a dream about four nations, four beasts that came up out of the sea. And uh, in, in the last beast that he talked about, and by the way, all those beasts represented end-time nations. And the last one was just a monster. It had ten horns that came up out of the sea, and it conquered the entire world. There's coming a time when there will be a world government ruled by one who's uh, an evil person called the Antichrist. But those ten horns that were on the head of the beast represented ten kingdoms. And um, we know that, that already there are, are voices in the United Nations that are designating uh, kingdoms or areas for a one world government. And not just the United States by itself, but, uh, but North America and South America and Russia, China, and so forth. Um, but anyway, those, those ten, ten nations, it says of them that when they, uh, when they come to pass, that there's coming a time in Daniel 7, 8, where three of those nations are going to be plucked up by the roots. Wow, that's amazing. Three of these end-time nations or kingdoms are going to be destroyed totally, plucked up by the roots. And, uh, and we're going to look at that a little bit today. Uh, we might even ask the question, who in the world are these three nations that are going to be plucked up by the roots? I think part of the key is found in Ezekiel chapters 38 and chapter 39. In that passage of scripture, we read about the war of Gog and Magog. This is a battle that will take place, a devastating battle, when Russia and a huge Islamic army will one day invade the land of Israel. Uh, they will come, uh, Russia will come for a great spoil, but the, uh, but the Islamic armies will come with absolute hatred. Their desire to, to drive the, uh, the people of Israel into the sea, to eradicate them. And there's a, a battle that takes place. They will begin to fight against each other. And, and we actually read that, that five out of the six soldiers are going to be destroyed that will come into that land. And it's going to be an amazing battle. And uh, you wonder, who in the world are, are these three end-time nations plucked out by their roots? Uh, I'm convinced that one of them, of course, is Russia. Uh, God had said in Ezekiel 39, 6, that he would send fire on Magog and on those beyond the sea. It's going to be a terrible, terrible battle. I think a nuclear holocaust. But a second group that's torn up or plucked up by the roots would appear to be the Islamic nations. Not that there will be nuclear warfare on those uh, Islamic nations, northern Africa and in the Middle East and so forth, but five out of six of their soldiers will be eliminated. It would be a terrible, terrible battle. But it brings us to the point of asking the question, who's the third uh, nation? Russia and Islam, who's the third nation? And... Uh, well, the Bible declares that the Lord would destroy the homeland of Gog and Magog and another unnamed nation. And, of course, I've quoted that before from Ezekiel 39.6. You ought to circle that in your Bible and, and give some thought about that. I will send fire on Magog and among those who dwell safely in the coastlands. The coastlands is translated in other passages as afar off or at the ends of the earth or beyond the sea. Uh, another uh, superpower, apparently, that comes to the, uh, to the rescue or to the aid of Israel during this battle of Gog and Magog. Uh, I believe there are several prophetic scriptures that would help us to reveal the identity 
of who this third nation is that's going to be plucked up by their roots. And so we will begin today in our study toward the end of the Bible in the book of Revelation, chapter 18. And as we uh, would look at that, and I'm just going to bring out several verses, I would encourage you after this study to spend a little time and read the entire chapter, chapter 18. But we find there the description of a great end-time nation that is called Babylon, or the daughter of Babylon. And uh, interesting things that are, are depicted for us in this scripture. And here's what we read. After these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was made bright with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen. Revelation 18, 1 and 2. This is not historical Babylon from, from thousands of years ago. By the way, historical Babylon was never destroyed. It was taken over by the Medes and the Persians. Their king, uh, Belshazzar, was slain. But the Medes and Persians took it over. And, and of course, later on, of course, came the, uh, after the Medes and the Persians came the Grecian Empire and then the Romans. But uh, historical Babylon was never really destroyed. And this is, talking about, this is talking about something entirely different. This is not historical Babylon. This is toward the end of the ages, an end time nation. And the very fact that Babylon is mentioned in the book of Revelation tells you that, that whoever this Babylon is, is an end time nation. Well, in verse 3 of, of this chapter, here's what we read. The merchants of the earth are grown rich through the abundance of her delicacies. She's going to be a nation that's very wealthy. And you find in verse 7 uh, how much she has glorified herself and lived luxuriously. This is a wealthy nation. Number one, end time Babylon will be very wealthy. And the people will, will live in great luxury. And, uh, and then we find in verse 7 of Revelation 18, she says in her heart, I sit a queen. And am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Um, end time Babylon will apparently be very proud and very self-confident, able to take care of themselves, so they think. Uh, but in her pride and in her self-confidence, we're going to find other things about Babylon that are not so good. Uh, we go on and we find in verse 11, And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buys their merchandise anymore. When this end time Babylon is destroyed, uh, the merchants from all over the earth, they, they weep because they've lost their best customer. Uh, that would tell us that, that this end time Babylon is going to be a consumer of the products of the world. I used to think that end time Babylon, as you find the, uh, the products listed there in Revelation 18, uh, chariots and uh, chariots of men, which speaks of transportation and gold and silver and all these fancy things. I used to think they were the producer of the products of the world, but no, they're really the consumer. They're the ones who buy products from all over the world. In verse 23 of that chapter, we read, By thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Sorceries is the Greek word pharmakia. It's uh, the word from which we get our word pharmacy, medications, and drugs. Um, end time Babylon will be a nation of, of great drug and uh, drug addiction and deception. They're going to manufacture these drugs and peddle them all over the world. But end time Babylon will be a nation given to drugs. Well, then we go back to the Old Testament. And we find some interesting references about about Babylon. Um, some people believe that ancient Babylon will be suddenly rebuilt um, there in the desert wastelands of Iraq. But there are a number of reasons why I don't believe that can be true. Uh, first of all, this end time Babylon is going to be a nation with many harbors. And we know that Iraq, Baghdad, uh, the land of Sodom, uh, Hussein and so forth. The reason he started this war and, and invaded Kuwait is he wanted he wanted to be a, a half harbors. He's landlocked. He, he has no access to the 
to the um, to the ocean and so forth. But uh, whoever this end time Babylon is, it'll have many harbors, also many large cities. It'll be a great wealthy nation. Uh, they're going to influence the entire world. And one of the most remarkable things found in in uh, Isaiah chapter 18 is the fact that uh, this end time Babylon is going to be located west of Israel and beyond Africa. Uh, we know that uh, if you if you go to Jerusalem, uh, ancient Babylon was was to the east. They were they were beyond the uh, Jordan River and out beyond Jordan and of course Iraq. But that was all to the east. Uh, the wise men that came to, to worship the Christ child, they came from the east. We believe they came from Babylon. But listen to the words of, of Revelation chapter 18 and uh, verses one and two. Woe to the land shadowing with wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. There's that phrase, beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Whoever the scripture is talking about in the 18th chapter of, of Isaiah is talking about somebody beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, uh, beyond Africa, if you will. And uh, interesting phrase also that you find is that they're shadowing with wings. The word shadowing with wings literally means quivering, rattling or vibrating. Um, I think it's going to be a nation that has uh, many airplanes and air power. The nations are going to rattle because, because of all the airplanes coming and ar arriving and so forth. I, I used to spend a lot of time in the fall hunting in, in the mountains of Colorado, and I was just amazed. Uh, here you are way out in the middle of nowhere, and you look up and you see, you see these airplanes going across. They were so far up that you couldn't even, for the most part, couldn't hear them. But if you live anywhere around a, a city where there's airports, those airplanes, uh, they, they rattle houses and, and they vibrate the whole earth when they come, when they land, and, and of course, when they take off. Um, you find in verse 2 of Isaiah chapter 18, this nation will send ambassadors by the sea, even in vessels of bulrushes upon the waters, saying, go, you swift messengers, to a nation scattered and stripped to a people terrible from their beginning. To this time, a nation measured out and trampled down, whose land the rivers have, have polluted. Several things to notice in, in that passage of scripture. First of all, scattered and stripped, simply means plowed, planted, fully developed. Whoever this nation is, is scattered and stripped, plowed and planted, a nation that is fully developed. And then to a people terrible from their beginning, uh, a people highly respected and revered, a people you don't fool with. And uh, whoever this nation is, they're going to be uh, a nation that has military might. And uh, you'll also find it'll be a nation measured out and trampled down, a land that is completely uh, surveyed with many roads, a land that is fully developed. And then, of course, you see that phrase, whose land the rivers have, have spoiled, polluted rivers. Uh, this will be uh, the nation that Isaiah talks about. Now, we go back to Jeremiah chapter 50 and, verses, and chapter 51 also. And here's where you find the biggest a, a number of descriptions about this uh, end-time Babylon. By the way, I... I wrote a little book about this some, some years ago and I didn't develop it much and it's not been well received. People don't want to talk about um, destruction and death and, and judgment that's coming upon nations and so forth. So I didn't develop it much, but I felt that it's time for me to be honest and make, make these things known. I'm just amazed how uh, so many of our pastors are, are so particular verse by verse word by word in the New Testament. And then they come to Revelation chapter 18 or Jeremiah 50, 51, and they skim over it and don't spend any time. Uh, well, my heart has been drawn to these, to these passages. And um, I've, I've wanted to take a, a closer look. Here's what we find in Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse four. 
In those days and in that time, says the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together, going and weeping. They shall go and seek the Lord their God. Uh, the thing that we see from this passage of Scripture is that in time Babylon will exist during the days when the people of Israel begin to return to their God-given land. Now, I don't believe they're, they're going back there in faith today in obedience. I think there's coming a time when the Lord's going to blow a trumpet, what we call the, uh, the, uh, the Feast of, of, of Trumpets, uh, a Jewish holiday that's celebrated in the fall. Someday the Lord's going to call the people. And they will come from north and south, east and west. But they have begun to go in. Like the valley of, of the uh, of dry bones, um, Israel has become a nation. Uh, rattling around, making noise. They're in the papers and in the news all the time. But they don't have faith. They don't, they don't have breath. They're not spiritually alive yet. But they will be. But end time Babylon will exist during those days when the people of Israel begin to return to their God-given land. We find in verse 12 of Jeremiah 50, Your mother shall be completely confounded. She that bore you shall be ashamed. This is an amazing um, um, description of end-time Babylon, born from a motherland. Can you imagine that? Uh, here's a nation that's going to be born from a motherland. This is not ancient Babylon. This is an end-time nation born and then later abandoned by the motherland. Uh, verse 12, your mother shall be completely confounded. She that bore you shall be ashamed. I think that someday uh, the motherland of whoever this end time Babylon is, is going to stand back and, and not be involved in defending her and protecting her. Uh, she's going to be ashamed. She, she will not have gone to the rescue of her daughter nation, if you will. But then you read in the end of verse 12, Behold, the hindermost, or the youngest of the nations, shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. Uh, end time Babylon, uh, number seven, is, is going to be the youngest of great nations. Now, ancient Babylon is the oldest. And that's not what it's referring to here in, in Jeremiah chapter 50. End time Babylon will be one of the youngest of the great nations. Verse 14, put yourselves in array against Babylon, round about. All ye that bend the bow, shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she has sinned against the Lord. End time Babylon will have forsaken the ways of God. And they will have begun living in defiance of the teachings of the Bible. And they will come to the point of saying, we don't want God telling us what we can do. It'll be a nation uh, that will reject the truth of God's word. They will bring judgment upon themselves, forsaking the ways of the Lord. And in verse 16, we read, Cut off the sower from Babylon, and him that handles the sickle in the time of harvest. For fear of the oppressing sword, they shall turn every one to his own people, and they shall flee every one to his own land. This is another remarkable prophecy about and description about, about end time Babylon. End time Babylon will have had many foreign peoples working in their fields, um, working in their harvests. But these foreign workers someday are going to flee out of absolute panic. Something is going to take place that's going to cause them to return to, to their own homeland. Um, Back in Isaiah chapter 47, there's a, a most remarkable prophecy that's given about the daughter of Babylon, and it almost sounds like terrorism. Listen to these words. Therefore shall evil come upon thee, thou shalt not know from where it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee, and thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee, Suddenly, which thou shalt not know. You know, right now, one of, the, uh, one of the fearful things about terrorism is that you don't know who your enemy is. Um, they might be living right next door. Might be the people that are, that are serving you at, down at the grocery store. Uh, people that have mixed in and, and live with 
with, uh, with a nation that they are intent to destroy. And that scripture says, thou shalt not know where your trouble comes from. Uh, you shall not be able to put it off. Desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. So end time Babylon will have had many foreign peoples working in their fields, but these foreign workers will one day flee in panic. Now I think of an illustration of that. If, if end time Babylon were a country such as America, uh, we have a, a problem with illegal aliens and all that stuff going on. Uh, they'll have to break the wall down to get out of here um, because they're going to flee and be in absolute sheer panic. Don't know exactly who Babylon is, this end time Babylon. Uh, but it's a dreadful thing that's coming upon it. In verse 37 of, of uh, chapter, uh, chapter 50, we read these words, A sword is upon their horses their, uh, and their chariots, their, their transportation system, and upon all the mixed people that are in the midst of her. Mixed people. Number 10, end time Babylon will be a land with a mixed multitude, literally a melting pot of all nationalities. Now that's pretty descriptive of most countries. Uh, we have a granddaughter who's down in Brazil and, and they have people from Africa and they have people from, uh, from South America, of course, and people from America and people from, from Portugal and all over the world. Uh, but whoever this end time Babylon is, it'll be a land with a mixed multitude, a melting pot of all nationalities. And then we go over to Jeremiah chapter 51, and the descriptions continue. This is pretty revealing. Verse 17. Every man is stupid by his own knowledge. What in the world does that mean? Well, verse uh, Isaiah 47.10 says, Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it has perverted you. You know, it's a great tragedy that uh, the key to economic success in, uh, in so much of the world today depends on getting a good education. And the people that, that go after that big education come out with, with a very liberal philosophy, humanistic. Um, as verse 17 says, every man is stupid by his own knowledge. Your wisdom, your knowledge, it has perverted you. Uh, end time Babylon will apparently be a land with education that denies God and denies good. And it's not only higher education now, it's reached down into our, our, our high schools and middle schools and elementary schools. Um, our children are being indoctrinated. You know this to be true. Uh, it isn't just learning about, about uh, education, uh, math, uh, mathematics, things like that. They're being indoctrinated. And these kids are coming out in defiance of God. We wonder why... The church is shrinking in our modern world. It's because where the, where the kids are being educated. Verses 7 and 8 of Jeremiah chapter 51 says this. Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunk. The nations have drunk of her wine, and therefore the nations are mad. Uh, that verse is telling us that at one time, whoever Babylon is, was a, a golden chalice in the hands of the Lord, a nation that was doing the right thing, perhaps a nation that was sending out missionaries and a nation that was, uh, that was known for its, its promotion of the gospel. And then they turn, they drink out of those, that golden chalice and they, they become drunkards and they, they lead the world in, in, uh, in, in terrible perversion. Whoever this nation is, is going to be a nation that has turned against God. Uh, at one time, a great blessing to the world, and it begins to pollute the earth through their materialism, their drugs, and, and their immorality. Uh, chapter 51 and, and verse 13 tells us, O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, your end is come. End time Babylon is going to be uh, an end time nation that is going to be involved with commercial trade from all over the world. Her harbors, her seaports will be filled with ships. And uh, this is going to be, a, as we saw in Revelation chapter 18, a consumer of the world's products, the center of commerce. 
with, with ships coming in uh, filled with, with all of their material things to bring. Uh, in Jeremiah chapters 50 and 51, we read not only about the description of end time Babylon, but we also read about the destruction. And this is pretty sobering. But it's important for us to understand these things. So I want to share them real quickly. First of all, in chapter 50, in, in verse, verse 1, we read these words. The word that the Lord spoke against Babylon. That is a, an awesome phrase. Uh, I wouldn't want to hear my name that the Lord is against me. Um, it's just a, an incredible thing. The, the word that the Lord spoke against Babylon it would remind you of, of Gog and Magog. I'm against the oh, Gog and Magog. And whoever end time Babylon is, the word of the Lord spoke against Babylon. How is the praise of the whole earth surprised? How has Babylon become a horror among the nations? Um, and we go on and we find other uh, descriptions of this terrible day of destruction. In verses 8 and 9, flee out of the midst of Babylon. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country. From there, that is, from the north, she shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. I think that this passage is, is describing a nuclear holocaust and missiles that come over the North Pole, uh, coming from an assembly of great nations out of the North Country, attacked suddenly from the North by a number of powerful nations. And then we read in verse 22, a sound of battle is in the land of, the, uh, of great destruction. And at the noise, verse 46, at the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved. And the cry is heard among the nations. Not only will this nation be destroyed in time Babylon, but the rest of the world is going to cry in anguish. Uh, the earth apparently is literally going to be jolted off its orbit because of the terrible holocaust. I believe, of nuclear holocaust and destruction. Isaiah 13, 13, and also chapter 24, tells us, God says, I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall move out of its place. Uh, can you imagine the earth being jolted off its orbit? And uh, if that were to happen, Isaiah 24, 19 tells us, the earth shall reel to and fro uh, like a drunkard. And if the earth went through space and it's erratic in its movement and not precise like it is in its present orbit. Uh, it, would, it would create earthquakes and tsunami waves like you can't believe. You know, Jesus spoke about that type of thing in Luke chapter 21. Jesus said, distress of nations with perplexity will come, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. Well, back to Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 32, we read, I will kindle a fire in his cities, plural, not one city, but many cities. I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it should devour all around about him. The devastation of what appears to be a nuclear attack will occur in many cities, and not just one large city. And then in verse 42, the sea has come upon uh, Babylon. She is covered with a multitude of its waves. Great tsunami waves come crashing into the cities built along the, the coastlands. And we think those are only the things that Hollywood could come up with. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that if the earth were, were jolted off its orbit, Remember the, the liquid of the earth, if the earth became erratic in its movement through space, it would cause waves possibly thousands of feet high that would come crashing into the cities. Wow, it's amazing. Now back in Revelation chapter 18, where we began our study, uh, in chapter 18 and verse 17, you'll find the scope of this, of this terrible destruction coming upon end time Babylon. 
And scripture says, for in one hour so great riches are come to nothing. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as is, is trade by sea stood afar off. They stand afar off because they cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto the great city? For in one hour she is made desolate. Uh, the people on these ships no longer come into end time Babylon for fear of this smoke, which I think is nuclear. And, uh, and, it, and we find that the smoke of her burning, it happens in one hour. In one hour she's made desolate. Total destruction in just one hour. That's the days in which we live. And those things are very, very possible. And they will come upon end time Babylon. Jeremiah 51, verse 41 says, How is the praise of the whole earth surprised? How is Babylon become a horror among the nations? Uh, we read about these things. Uh, I would encourage you. Uh, there's so much that I haven't been able to in the, in the short period of time we had together. Uh, I would encourage you to open your Bibles for yourself. Take a look and read slowly through, repeatedly, Revelation 18, and also Jeremiah chapters 50 and 51. Uh, there are other passages that you'll want to consider that also deal with the daughter of Babylon, whoever this end time Babylon is. Uh, Isaiah chapters 13, 24, 47. They all describe devastating judgment coming upon a great end time nation referred to as, as the uh, daughter of Babylon. I put together a, uh, a summary uh, that I've printed and I've, I've put it out in, in PDF format. And if you're interested in this, you can email me and I'd be glad to send you a copy of it. But it really is a description of what we've been talking here about today. Here's a summary description. The Bible describes a powerful end time city and the nation that it represents as Babylon and the daughter of Babylon. Babylon will be the youngest of the great nations, born from a motherland, composed of a mixed multitude, a literal melting pot of all nationalities. A Babylon is depicted as the most wealthy of all nations, the world center of manufacturing commerce and agricultural production. Her location is to the west of Jerusalem, not to the east. She's beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. The end time society will also be a great consumer of the world's products with merchant ships filling her many harbors. The land will be fully developed and mapped with many cities. Air travel, military, security are some of her, her greatest assets. And you'll also find that Babylon and her people, who were once recognized as the Lady of Kingdoms, will come, become preoccupied with pleasures, luxuries, and higher education. She will also become arrogant in her attitude toward the Lord of Heaven. She will give herself to drugs and occultic practices and great immorality. Perversion will become her accepted lifestyle. The sins of her national leaders will be exposed for all the world to see. And the rumor of terrorism and coming destruction will cause multitudes to flee from her cities and to seek shelter in their own homelands. The once glory of kingdoms will come under severe judgment and the chastening hand of the Lord who himself made her great. And I personally reframed from identifying who I think Babylon is, you probably get a pretty good idea. And I'll let you study that and come to your own conclusions. Um, I don't believe that if you're a born again Christian, you ought to fear at all the things that are coming in the future. Remember that absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And even if, even if this took place before the rapture, in a moment's time, we'd be in the presence of the Lord and things will get real good as we're in the in New Jerusalem with him. Uh, but I want to encourage you to, to seek shelter and refuge in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our rock and our fortress. Uh, 
All of us that know him, seek him, and love him, uh, he's our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in time of trouble. Seek the Lord and and draw near to him and look for his coming. Um, As I go back to Psalm 46, where God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in trouble, therefore we will not fear. And though the earth is removed, taken off course perhaps, And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, we will not fear. Remember what God says in Ezekiel chapter 18. God is not one who delights, by the way, in the destruction of the ungodly or the godly. We read in Ezekiel 18, 23, Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live. Uh, The Lord is our help. He's the resurrection and the life. And we find hope only in him. Now I want to encourage you, if you know the Lord as your Savior, number one, share this with, with other friends. Study the scriptures yourself. But I would encourage you to Turn to the Lord in prayer and just ask God to, uh, to pour out his spirit and bring about a, 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 a revival where multitudes would come to know the Lord as Savior. If you've not been active in witnessing to unsaved friends and family, uh, may God give you the boldness and the burden to begin to share the message of hope, the message of life that we have in Christ. Um, we need to be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks us us a hope of the reason that's within us. Um, You need to know the gospel. You need to share it. We have gospel literature available, and we provide that without cost. Um, Christian people help support us as we we print literature and make it available around the world. But, um, you know, I, I read these things, and I tell you, I'm not filled with fear. I'm filled with a burden for the lost. May the Lord use us to to reach out to many people. Lord, that's our prayer today, is that uh, we will not take these messages of coming destruction that are coming upon the earth in in the future, perhaps even in our generation. Lord, may we not be filled with fear, but with a burden for those who do not know you. Lord, I thank you that you have said in your word you're not willing any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And Lord, I pray that you use me and my family and our friends to share the message of hope, the message of eternal life. Lord, give us opportunities to share the hope of the gospel. And we pray that you would do a mighty work and draw many people to yourself. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for being with us again today. Um, We have a lot more studies, and they're not all going to be prophecy. There are many other biblical topics that we're going to deal with. But if you need to communicate with us, if you would like a a copy of of that summary of the uh, description of End Time Babylon, you can write us at discoverynews1 at aol.com, and I'll respond. Uh, You can also find additional material, articles that have been written at uh, www www.discovery.global. If you're interested in the list of videos, just click on videos. There's all sorts of topics, everything from uh, dinosaurs, creation, uh, biblical discoveries, fascinating subject. We'll do a series on that someday. But you can go to discovery.global and find those things. And if you're interested in doing some Bible studies, we give a certificate upon completion. But uh, you can go to www.bible.support. And uh, we hope that you can avail yourself to those things and that you pass the word around to many people that need to hear. God bless you. We'll see you next time.